Hey guys, it's Danny, and we just wrapped up another Facebook Live and I made my autumn chicken salad with apples and grapes and walnuts. So I just wanted to pop over and share it here for those of you who are not on Facebook in case you want the recipe or any of the tips I shared in the recipe. Okay, enjoy it and I'll see you soon. And we're live, booyah. Now I'm just gonna hang out until people start tuning in. Hi guys, let me do my intro. It is Danny. A lot of you guys on these Facebook Lives have been asking me about um, a lunch idea. So I'm going to show you one of my favorite go-to easy salads to make. And it happens to be very seasonal because it also uses uh, um, apples and grapes, which are in season right now. So I'm going to be showing you my autumn chopped chicken salad, which is also like a Waldorf salad, okay? So I am going to jump on my phone like I always do to see who's here with me. And guys, remember, as you tune in, Come on down into the comments below and just let me know that you're here. This way we can cook and chat, okay? Hang on, reloading my page. For those of you who don't know, I tried to post it a few different places. I will also be live at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, so that's in 1.30, 2.30, two and a half hours on the Nourished by Taste Made Facebook page. And over there, I'm gonna be making my, um, my pumpkin spice energy balls, so. If you're available later, make sure you tune in over there as well. Oh, there I am, got my top knot rocking. If you guys are here, come on down to the comments and let me know. I see, I see you're starting to tune in, so don't be shy. We have a nice gray, rainy day here today. So, I just couldn't bring myself to actually brush my hair. Okay, I don't see anybody tuning in. Do you get, are you getting any comments? Yeah, there's Nikki. Okay, hi Nikki. I just want to make sure it's not my phone. She's from, uh, she's in Wales. Wow, is that not amazing, my friends? That is amazing. Judy is from British Columbia, Canada. Hello, Judy. Hello, Nikki. Thank you for joining me. I'm just getting my page set up so I can see the comments coming in, so I can chat with y'all. And then we're going to make this salad. What are you making again? So I'm making a autumn chicken salad. Whoops, whoops, volume. Hi know. from Hungary, Mary Ann. Amazing. In Vegas. Melanie in Vegas. God, this is amazing. I just, I just love the power of the web. Um, so I'm making an autumn chicken salad. It's really very similar to an, a Waldorf salad. It's actually really kind of is a Waldorf salad. Um, but because it uses apples and grapes, I thought it was so perfect for this time of the year. And hello, Daphna and your husband. Hello, hello. Love hey, to have you both here. No. Um, what? Hi, Danny and husband. Oh, oh, oh. You're saying hi to my husband. That was very sweet. Hey, Daphne. Um, so we're going to make this salad. And I also want to chat a little bit about fats because omega-3s, you know, they're still the talk of the town. Um, but I want to talk about the omega-3 and the omega-6 ratio because it's important stuff. So we're going to get to that too when I get to adding my mayo and stuff. So basically, what I want you all to do is to come on down to the comments below and let me know what is your favorite sandwich to make or your favorite salad that you could put on a sandwich. So this you can either serve on bread or I also have lettuce wraps here to show you guys another option. But I'm curious if you have a go-to favorite salad to make. This is definitely one of our go choose in our house. Christine, we've got a shout out from Barbados. Jen from Wisconsin. Katie from Atlanta. Laura from Oregon. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me on this Tuesday afternoon. Total last minute. We also minute have uh, Fiona's in Hong Kong. Fiona in Hong Kong. This is crazy. Amazing. So amazing. I'll keep saying that. Okay, so let's chat autumn chicken salad, okay? So you guys know I'm really into my head start ingredients, right? That just basically means we prep a bunch of stuff on the weekend and it's hanging out in the refrigerator. One of those things is usually some form of chicken and oftentimes it is a store-bought rotisserie chicken because I don't have to do anything and it's delicious and it's so versatile. So sometimes, you know, when we're all trying to eat better or create better habits, we think we have to do, you know, it's like, we. Oh, sometimes I think we make it more complicated than it needs to be. You know, get a rotisserie chicken, chop up some veggies, and you've got two amazing Head Start ingredients that you can use in a plethora of ways once the week gets going. So this is one of the ways we like to use that. So I wanna show them the chicken here. So I pulled up about eight ounces of chicken and I give it like a rough chop. You can see it's not super tiny. Um, Deanne, hi from Texas, love your hair. Thank you, this is my, I didn't wanna brush my hair here. But I put the red lipstick on to, to make it look like I put a little effort into it, you know. You know what I'm saying, ladies. Plus I got eyelash extensions. We'll talk about that later. Extensions, has anybody done this before? So fun. They're not exactly the way I wanted her to do them, but 
they're still fun to have. We'll talk about that on Snapchat. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Yes. <clears throat> Jeanette in Germany. Oh my gosh, we went to high school together. I know you, Jeanette. Hi. Do you like cooking these days? Thanks for being here. That's so cool. You live in Germany? Amazing. Okay, here's what we're doing. We have the chicken in the bowl. Now, basically, all I do for the salad is we're going to add some veggies and some fruit. So it's going to have apples, celery, grapes, um, a little bit of walnut for crunch and healthy fats, and then I do a little bit of scallion for color, and it gives it that slight onion flavor without being overpowering. Um, because my kids like this salad too, they're not big on raw onions, which is kind of a bummer because I think they're so good, but they don't like them so much. So I like to do either scallions or chives because they get a mild flavor, but they don't think they have big chunks of onion in the salad, right? So I'm going to start by chopping up my celery. Good note, if you're new to cooking, guys, put your hands into this claw shape so you protect your fingers and your thumb, can you see that? Your thumb pushes the ingredient along. So here's what it's going to look like. When you start to practice these little techniques, you will get so much faster and more efficient in the kitchen. Daphna, how long do they last? Um, how about the salad, Daphna? Tell me what you're talking about. Eyelashes. Oh, I, have, I love my ladies. We don't care about the food. Let's talk about eyelashes. <laughs> Let's just talk about eyelashes. So apparently they're supposed to last, uh, they say they should last like three weeks. They want you to come back the first time you get them after two weeks. And then, um, but they say once, once you have like your care down, you should have to go back like every three weeks or so. So, okay, so we need about a half a cup of celery. So I'm gonna do two, two slices. Oh my God, I love that we're more interested in eyelashes than chicken salad. And I get it, I am too, and I'm very excited about it. Okay. All right, so you get your celery into the dish. Now, guys, if you are feeding kids, my recommendation would be cut the celery even smaller than what I did here because kids like little tiny crunchy things. So it becomes more of like a textural sensation in their mouth and it's really easy to get them to eat more fruits and vegetables that way, okay? My other kid tip is do not base what they ate yesterday on what they will eat today. I think a lot of people get discouraged because we put so much time and effort into what we're gonna give them and then they don't want it. And you're like, oh, I guess he doesn't like broccoli. Oh, I guess she doesn't like celery. And then if you just give it to them again, they'll eat it. So you just never know. The best thing I think we could do as parents is just keep leading by example, leading by example, leading by example. Um, Jeanette, I love having my eyelashes wet. Oh, you can't rub your eyes? See, I've only had them for like less than 24 hours, guys. I'm doing here with okay, sorry. My husband's all worried that I'm not telling you guys what to do with the food, but the ladies want to talk lashes. Okay, so I'm cutting my apple into matchsticks, as you just saw, and then you go back in the opposite direction and you create this small dice. We're going to do it again, okay? So... You go in one direction, so you're creating thin matchsticks. Don't worry if they fly around. And then just rotate the whole bunch and come back the other way. It's like a checkerboard. And then you get this nice tiny little dice. Easiest way to do it. Okay, so this, this recipe calls for an entire apple, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. Jen, don't tell the kids what's in it and sometimes they'll never know what's in it. It's so true, I think it's a mental thing. Um, sometimes they get the, an idea that something isn't good or they don't want to eat something and I hate to say it but when my kids started school I feel like it got worse because they listen to other people's opinions and then they come home telling you like oh I don't like this or this is gross and I'm like you know you just ate it yesterday but you know their little brains start to get informed by other people other than mom which is heartbreaking because I would prefer to control their entire world Okay. Honey crisp, Jen. Honey crisp apple. It is, it is my very favorite apple this time of year because they're sweet, they're tart, they have a great texture, and they're also the most expensive apple, wouldn't you know it? Um, but they're my favorite. But you could do any tart apple. You could do a green apple. You could do a Fuji apple. Um, Daphna, you don't have to use celery. You can use any crunchy, literally any crunchy vegetable. You could do broccoli, you could do cauliflower, you could do fennel. I mean, anything crunchy will do the job. So don't get, sometimes when you see recipes like this, don't get too hung up. Try to match the textures and then you'll usually be good to go. Okay, so we've got our celery, our apple. Then what I am doing is I'm going to cut about a cup of grapes and I just cut them right into half. So it's not nothing crazy bonazzi here. And I love salads like this too because you can change them with the seasons. 
You know, like right. Cheat it. Mm -hmm. My husband's directing me over here to make sure you guys can see what's happening. I'm always in front of the camera, but my hubby over here, he's my, he's my, he's my right hand man. Is that what I say? Partner. What would you call it, thing? I don't know. I'm concentrating. He's concentrating. He's concentrating. How much chicken? Eight ounces of chicken, so like roughly two cups. Hey, Pam. I'm happy that you're getting excited about this recipe. We're always, people are always looking for lunch ideas, and I say, don't forget the simple classics. We don't always have to get fancy. Some of the best, most delicious, nutritious dishes are the classics. Go back to the classics. And I also think sometimes eating well and eating healthy, like, oftentimes it's just, we just have to remind ourselves of stuff we already know, you know, like, I, I, I know I get a lot of people who say, oh, breakfast is so hard. I don't have time to eat a healthy breakfast. But there are so many things that we can eat for breakfast that are, I mean, like a piece of Ezekiel toast and almond butter, healthy. Banana in a hand school, you know, a handful of walnuts, healthy. Um, I, I, if you do dairy, you can do a yogurt with some type of nut and fruit on top, healthy in two minutes. Great job, hummy, hubby. Tara's giving you some points. Mm -hmm. Hey, great, Elena, Alana, Elena. Season? Grapes are in season, yes. Uh, th that's what you see them a lot at Thanksgiving. This is, they're very seasonal. They come in like September, this is prime time. Okay, so guys, if you're tuning in, we've got chicken, grapes, celery, and um, apple in the bowl so far, okay? This would be yummy for lunch or dinner, I totally agree. I love your recipes, please shout out. Suganya, shout out to Suganya. Take a selfie with him and send us. Okay, Daphna. Daphna wants a selfie with me and you. I'm gonna do it. If you guys aren't following me on Snapchat, follow me. I share a lot more like ins and outs and personal stuff on there. Although you don't let, you don't get in front of the camera a lot, hubby. Even though, okay, I'll, I'll stop talking. Okay, I'm going to give this a pinch of salt and pepper. Okay, salt, pepper. I definitely should have used a bigger bowl, but I didn't. Okay, then what I do is I take a handful of, um, these are the chives. Remember I said earlier, the reason I use the chives is because A, they add color and they're pretty, and that means a lot to our brains when we're eating food. We like to eat things that are appealing. So making your food look good actually turns the brain on and it makes it feel very satisfied. Okay, so, okay. Nikki's mouth is watering. Jen doesn't understand Snapchat, and oh my God, Jen, I have to laugh because I literally, you guys know, I literally had to have my 16-year-old niece teach me how to do it because I tried myself for about two weeks and I, I couldn't figure it out. And then finally I got her to show me how and then I was like addicted. Okay, so we've got that for color. Now we're gonna talk about our fats, okay? So I'm adding a little bit of fresh chopped walnut. The walnuts, you could also do pecans, um, these add a great texture and they have those healthy omega-3s. This is a natural source of the omega-3s. We hear a lot about them and that is because we really, um, our bodies like natural fats that come from natural sources like walnuts, flax seeds, avocados, high quality dairy, high quality meat if you, if you eat it. You know, the difference between conventional beef and pastured grass-fed beef, it literally changes the molecular structure of the fat that's going in your body. One is like an inflammatory and it's going to create degenerative disease and the other is anti-inflammatory and it literally cleans the arteries and um, protects the body and builds immunity. So, you know, where our food comes from and how it's, how it's treated and raised, and it, it really matters. Now, with that being said, I don't want you to drive yourself crazy. You know, we all have to find a way to make it work in our life. Um, but I do think when it comes to certain foods, it's worth looking for those higher quality ingredients. Um, which is, brings me to my mayo. Okay, no, it's bring me to my first. I do um, a quarter cup of plain Greek yogurt. Now this is 2%. You could do full fat um, or you could do fat free. I don't, I don't really like fat free just from a flavor perspective. But if, it, if it's your thing, then that's totally fine. This serves two to four, I would say, two to four. Okay, how long will the salad last in the fridge? Oh, it'll last, it'll last a couple days. a few days, yeah. Um, okay, this is what I wanted to talk about. Ran, swim, flew, or grew. I love that, Tara. That's it, ran, swim, flew, or grew. You know, so much about what we hear about food today, it's like, oh, reading labels, which I'm gonna do a video on, and you know, picking healthier foods and reading packages, but the truth is, 
Most things that come in a package are not super healthy. We have made eating so complicated. Just when we, when we retrain ourselves to focus on real whole foods, so much of the work gets eliminated because you don't have to think so much, you know? Notice like apples don't come with a health, health claim, but like everything in those middle aisles, it's like heart healthy, this, that, the other. Okay, I'm getting off my soapbox. I'm getting a spoon, we're gonna talk mayo. Now, personally, I love mayonnaise. So whenever recipes, whenever I'm trying to like lighten something up um, by using yogurt, I still will include some mayo because I love it. And to me, mayonnaise is a great ingredient. The only hang up with mayo, most mayos these days, is that they use vegetable oils. And here's the thing with vegetable oils. Vegetable oils are used in most all processed foods. It's cheap, it's subsidized, and it is abundant. Okay, but the thing with vegetable oils is that they are made of omega-6 fatty acids. So we have the threes and the sixes. We need both of them. But in today's day and age, what's happening is we're getting way too many sixes. And what, when you have too many sixes, the balance is totally out and the sixes literally start to like knock out the threes. So all the health benefits that the threes are bringing are getting elbowed out by the sixes. And this creates inflammation in the body and, and plaque and all the other stuff that um, the better healthy fats don't create. So just like we all need another thing to think about when we're shopping, when you're buying processed foods, if you can, you know, some higher quality processed foods are starting to shift the fats they use. So this is an example. So this is a mayonnaise. This is brand is called Primal Kitchen. There's another one called, I think, Sir Kenningston. And instead of using the vegetable ale, they use, um, they, hey, Laura, oh, they use, um, avocado. thank you, avocado oil, which again is omega-3. So, so you're not getting the abundance of those, um, the vegetable oils. So, you know, if I'm telling you good health, it's so beyond calories and stuff, guys. It's really about real whole foods. That's the transition because when you can get your body onto real whole foods and adjust your taste buds and make clean and delicious recipes, you're good. Okay, so we've got everything in the bowl. I'm gonna start to stir this together. Even though I used a bowl that is way too small, we're gonna make it work because that's how we roll. I want you guys to come on down into the comments below and tell me if you knew about the omega-3s and the 6s or if that's new information to you. Was that, is that something you've already been aware of and been mindful of? Or is that like, dang, all, another thing to know. How much mayo did you use? So I used two tablespoons of mayo. Sabrina, you're not too late. You're always perfectly timed, my friend. Okay. How good does this look? Now, I probably won't do the world's best mixing job just because of the bowl size that I... Where do you buy the mayo? Um, you know what, guys? I'll leave a link down in the description box below. I believe they sell it at Whole Foods, but you can also buy it online. The guy that makes this mayo is Mark Sisson. He's the, um, the founder of uh, Mark's Daily Apple. He's, he's a primal guy. So he's all about paleo eating and primal eating and all that jazz. But he recently started to come out with a line of products, and they're really good, high-quality products. I, I do think they're... I respect him a lot. I think he does good work. Good work in this world, man. Okay. Laura had no idea. Here's the thing. A little omega-6 is not a big deal. And if you don't eat a lot of processed food, you really don't need to worry about it too much. Like, I'm going to tell you the truth. My favorite mayo, Hellman's. That's the mayonnaise I grew up on. Flavor-wise, it's still my favorite, and I still buy it sometimes. Um, we don't eat a ton of processed food in our house. So, you know, it's it really... Know thyself, my friends, know thyself. You gotta look at what you're doing, make it work for you, okay? So once you have your salad all mixed together, like I have here, then you can either build a sandwich, right, with bread, or this salad is really great in lettuce wraps. So here's a couple pieces of bread, but I think I'm gonna go right for the lettuce wraps. Now this is butter lettuce, which is my, um, guys, everybody's asking about the mayo. I am going to leave I'll leave a link down in the comments after we're done with this video so you guys can see the mayo and check it out. Okay, so you take, butter lettuce is great for when you wanna do lettuce wraps because it's, it's very, um, it's hearty and it's strong enough. A lot of times it's like in a cup form, but these must have been the outer leaves. But anyway, you pile well, it on. Flat, butter the thing. Oh, right, but still, that, it's, shapes should still be the same. So you take a couple scoops, you put it in the middle of your 
lettuce wrap and you have lunch. You could fold it up like a taco and then go for it. I'm not gonna go for it because I wanna keep talking. Um, but so that's option number one. Another option is to take your favorite bread. In a perfect world, I might lightly toast it. This is the Ezekiel bread. You guys know I'm like a huge fan of the Ezekiel bread. I would layer on some lettuce like I'm doing right now. Now this is a great lunchbox idea. If you guys have kids in school, I mean you could easily eliminate the nuts if they can't do the nut thing at school. Um, but it's a great way because they're getting in protein, healthy fats, fruits and vegetables, and all they know is that it's delicious. Right, so you can pile that all on. I made the lettuce so big I can't see the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna make this, but while I'm doing it, now is your time, guys. If you have any thoughts or questions, come on down, even if you wanna talk about eyelashes, come on down into the comments and let me know um, so that before I hang up, I always feel like I'm on the phone, before we shut down, I can address them, okay? Okay, so piling that on. How good does that look? Oh, M to the G. Yeah, shout out. Top or no top? Uh, yeah, top, but give me some space so it looks pretty. Hi, yeah, Christina. Okay. Kira, yes, we finally caught a live one. I'm so happy to have you here. I just started using that bread. Do you like it, Jen? I love it. I mean, I really love that bread, especially toasted. Toasted with a little bit of coconut oil and a pinch of salt, or if I'm going really crazy, um, toasted with a little bit of coconut oil, and then I put almond butter on top of it. Oh, so good. That is, talk about a fast breakfast, hot cup of coffee out the door and it like it sticks with you because because you have the fats and the, there's a little protein in the bread of course you're getting your healthy carbs so it's totally good um if you guys have any questions about the omega-3 and sixes let me know um let me take a look at what, what y'all are saying jamie cox i am using ezekiel bread it's the food for life brand and it's sprouted now it's not gluten free this package looks a mess because we're at the bottom of the barrel here it's not gluten free um, but a lot of people who are gluten sensitive, just sensitive, um, can handle it because the, the um, grains are sprouted. So which basically means they're processed even less. It's just a higher quality, less processed grain. And you have to remember when it comes to processing anything, the more a food is processed outside of your body, the less good for you it's going to be because we want our bodies to have to do the work, right? So the more whole form it is externally, the better it's gonna be internally. So this is just one less step in the world of processing. Um, 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 I just started using the Excel bread too. Do you like it, Melanie? Will this mayo keep for a few hours if a kid takes it to school? Um, yes, but it depends on the time of the year. It depends on the school. Like my kid's school, uh, it's very hot inside. Even in the winter, it's hot inside. So I always pack their lunch in, um, I'd show it to you, but they have it at school right now, in either the, the Planet Lunchbox um, packages, and it comes with an ice pack. So I put the ice pack on top, or stay right there. Um, I have ther therm thermalated, for thermo, therm, therm insulated. insulated, insulated backpack um, lunch boxes like this. And then I just throw an ice pack in. So with the mayo, I would recommend keeping some type of ice nearby, especially because they usually have a few hours before they before they eat it. I've seen a Zeke Girl bread at Trader Joe's. How does it taste? It looks dry in the package. It okay. It depends where you're coming from. It is definitely much drier and much grainier than other breads. I think um, eating it at room temperature can be a little bit of an adjustment, but toasted, I think it's amazing. Especially if you, like I said before, you give it a little bit of coconut oil or something to just season it and soften it up a bit. I mean, I, I, I now when I have other breads, I, I really, there's very few other breads I enjoy. I'm not saying that there's none, but um, I, it's my go-to bread and they have sesame and they have raisin, they have like different flavors, they have English muffins and tortillas and they, they really are good. Once you make that adjustment, I almost feel like you can't go back. Okay, Aida from Sweden, hi and thank you. The ratio between omega-3 and omega-6 used to be closer in range in my grandmother's day, 100%. Now the omega-6s can be 16 times greater than the threes, but I understand if you get a four to one, four being omega-6, you'll still be doing great. Oh, that's a great tip. Thank you for sharing that, Ida. Melanie, you're right, it is more dense. Good way to say it. Okay, my dears, if you didn't hear, I will be live again today. What do you want me to do? Um, sorry, I'll be live again on Facebook uh, at 4 p.m. today. I'm going to be on the Nourish by Taste Me channel, and on their channel, I'm going to be making my pumpkin energy balls. So 
if you guys are free to come over there and say hello, please do because those that when I'm on their platform, you know, I'm on their platform. So it's always fun to have my people over there. Laura, oh, I had no idea and she's going to switch. I love that. I love when we actually get a little tidbit. Okay. I'm trying to make these plates look pretty-ish. How's that? That's pretty enough. <laughs> okay, my dears. Have a lovely afternoon. If you can make it later on um, Facebook back at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, do it. I'm going to put the recipe down in the comments below. And also, if you didn't look at YouTube today, I also posted a new video there. How to make the world's best roasted sweet potatoes. They really are the best, in case you were wondering. Okay, I just adore you guys. Yes, 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nourish. Nourished by Taste Made. Pumpkin energy balls. And if, okay. If you guys want to talk lashes, follow me on Snapchat. Clean, delicious, no and. I'm going to go chat about them. Okay, bye.